This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2020 Bighorn Traveler, which is a fifth wheel, and the model number is 39RK. So this is not a floor plan video or a sales video. I'm just going to go over some of the features, some of the appliances and components, and show you how they work, okay? All right. So starting off, there's a quick connect for your LP system right here. So if you want to add a, you know, use a grill or a griddle or something like that, um, as long as it's a proper appliance for an RV, a low, a low pressure appliance, um, you can hook it up right there. Of course, your, your spare tire, carrier, and tire are right under there. <coughs> okay, you have slide toppers on all of the slide outs that we put on there for you. Now this this um, this fifth wheel has a uh, a six point leveling system. It's uh, automatic leveling, and uh, there are six jacks on it, three on each side. I'll show you how that operates. There's going to be two um, two ways to operate. There's a, a switch outside that gives you uh, just a couple of features. You can you can auto level it, auto hitch height, that sort of thing. And then there's one inside that's on a touch screen that you can um, you can do everything with it. You can you can run them independently of each other. You can uh, do everything manually, that sort of thing. Okay. So we'll get to that when we uh, we get to the switch. You have a power awning with LED strip, outside speakers, uh, your pass-through basement here. You also have a TV signal out plus a plug that put a TV out here. This, of course, is your uh, your dump hose that comes with it. And this is your the, you get two adapters with it because it's a 50 amp system. You get a, a 50 to 30, and then you get a 30 to 20, which is this one right here. In case you have to go down even farther, so you can plug this in in your driveway for if it fit, of course. Um, but you when you're using 20 amps, you really can't use the air conditioning because they draw too many amps. But you can run everything else on 20. If you need to. Okay, so we got two 30 pound LP tanks. These are your hydraulics here, 27 series deep cycle marine battery. Now, this here, let me turn this on, see if that's better. This, hopefully, we can see with the light glare. This is the one way to, to the first way to operate your leveling system. Um, so all you're going to do to, to turn it on, you push both arrows at the same time, like so. Well, let me try this again, like so. So you can see the green light came on. You just push auto level to level it. Um, to bring it back up, they give you two options here, retract all and, and hitch height. You're going to always use hitch height. So what, what happens is it re always remembers the last hitch height that you had before you auto level. So um, when you unhook your, uh, your tow vehicle, then you auto level it, it remembers that and will return the trailer to that, that position. So theoretically, anyway, you should be able to slide right underneath it and hook up. If you push retract all, it'll even retract the front landing gear and it'll, it'll nosedive. It won't hurt anything, I mean, but it's, everything's going to retract, including the front gear. So that's not really something you're going to use. Um, now, I told you there's a, a, a touch panel inside. Uh, I'll show you that it just it just gives you more options basically okay this is a this is a, a hookup for a solar battery charger if you wanted to add one just a solar panel uh, to charge your battery that's what that's for your other tank is behind this door here okay these are just your dump caps your dump sewer caps alrighty so we're going to give you a new a new hose here. That's got a permanent kink. It looks like it didn't come out overnight. So, okay, let me figure out how I'm going to do this right now. Just give me one second here. Ouch. Okay. So I wanted to put that up so we can see. So basically, you have your two gray tanks are here, right? Gray tank one, gray tank two. It's that simple. 
Now the, the black tank is towards the rear. I'll show you that valve when we get to it. But to bypass your water heater before you winterized, you're, you're going to just use this. You can either go to normal or bypass. Right now it's bypass because it's winterized. So um, keep that in mind. Now when it comes to getting water into your trailer, the most common way is city water, of course. You hook your hose up to here and you would go to city fixtures. Whoops, I gotta go all the way around here. Hold on. That way, city fixtures. So you do that and it, you're going to, uh, you know, all the, all the um, plumbing is gonna work off city water. Now, if, you want, if you're going to a campground that doesn't have plumbing on the campsites, you can fill your tank like that. So your fresh water tank would fill. After it's filled, full, you put it to dry camping, and then you use the onboard water pump to pump the water, okay? And then, of course, we had it here to winterizing, sanitizing, that sort of thing, which is obviously because we're winterized right now, that's the position to be in, so um, it's very simple. These are just uh, uh, coax in, campground, cable, satellite, that sort of thing. Uh, this is your, your black tank flush. So after you dump the black tank, you can leave the valve open. So you have to leave the valve open. Um, you hook the hose onto here at the dump station, turn it on, it'll spray the inside of your black tank out, and it will also um, clean off the sensors in the tank so you get a better, better, uh, truer reading of, of how, how full it actually is. So, okay. And then, of course, there's some directions here if you need them. Okay. So let's move on a bit here. Here's your water heater right here. Let me set this aside here. So this works on both gas and electric. So keep in mind the switches are inside the trailer. But there is, an, is a switch right here. See that's off, on, off. This switch controls the electric heating element that's behind this cover here. So you always want to remember that if you're going to use the electric heating element, which is the most common way to, you know, to use this, uh, this uh, water heater, uh, you have to turn it on here first. Right now the water is drained out of it. So you, always, you can never run the electric heating element, or the gas for that matter, but especially the electric heating element, without water in the tank it will burn it out in just a minute or so. So you always want to make sure there's water in there. Um, this is where the plug goes right in here. This is the plug itself and with an anode rod on it. This is an inch and a sixteen six point socket. So you need an inch and a sixteen six point socket, about a three to five or inch extension, and a ratchet or a breaker bar to, to uh, tighten and untighten it. So that's something you should have with you to, so you can uh, drain your water heater when you need to. These are where your dump valves or your uh, dump hose hooks up, of course. This is fresh water drain right there for the fresh water tank. All right. Now here, let me get a good picture of this for you. It's kind of hard to see. But this is your, your black tank valve. Hopefully you can see that. There's not much light down here. But there it is nevertheless. So that's where you dump your black tank at. And of course there's your, where you hook up your hose. All righty. And you've got a 50 amp cord, like I said before, it's 30 feet long, 50 amp. We give you a, a reducer right there to reduce it down to, uh, to uh, 30 amp, and then I, we give you another one to go from 30 to 20. I showed you that in the, in the pass-through basement, okay? You have a backup camera right there, and the backup camera is activated when you turn on your running light. So if you want to see behind you, when you're backing up or when you're driving down the road, you turn your running lights on and it'll light it up. Um, you have a ladder, which is a good thing. Uh, you need to inspect your roof every 90 days, according to the manufacturer. So every 90 days, you, uh, you go up there yourself or send somebody up there. You look at the sealant and the, make sure there's no cracking or separation in it so water can get in. If you see an issue like that, you get it taken care of immediately. You pay special attention to the corner areas and um, the skylights, that sort of thing, because the skylights heat up a, a little hotter than the other components. Um, also, you're going to look at all the roof attachments, make sure there's no uh, damage to any 
vent covers or, or roofing material, anything like that, that might have been done by low branches or road debris flipping up there and hitting it, stuff like that. So every 90 days you inspect the roof. Okay, so let's go inside. See what we got here. Okay. So when we first walk in the door, this is your power converter right here. So this converts AC to DC power. Okay. Um, let me just push this here. See if I'm. Yeah, I, I was. I was looking to see if I was zoomed in. Or, it's, I know. I know I'm very close to everything with this camera, but I don't. I do have a wide-angle lens, but it's not nearly uh, adequate enough. So uh, I'll just do the best I can with what I've got. So anyway, you plug your trailer in. The 110 AC comes up to this point. These are regular circuit breakers like you see at home, and they're all labeled. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC down here, 12 volt fuses, and they're all labeled. Um, if any of those fuses blow, they actually light up, and you can you can see them through this tinted plastic here so you would know. Also, um, this is a battery tender, so as long as you're plugged in, it's going to sense how much energy your battery up front has and needs, and it'll if it's if it's charged, it'll just trickle a couple amps up there to maintain it. If it's low, it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs to keep it charged. Okay. This is your touch panel. It just just for leveling. So you can, I'll just basically show you. You know, I, I told you about auto level and auto hitch. Um, you can scroll through these options here. Let's say you want to go to manual mode, which is there. You would hit enter. Now. I can, I can extend and retract it by selecting front, rear, left, or right. Extend or retract it. I can, I can operate the, the jacks independently of each other. So um, there's more you can do with this touch panel. And also, if you have to abort, uh, something's going wrong or something's caught underneath, it, for whatever reason, you run in here and, and an abort button will, will show once you're, you're auto leveling. Just hit it and it'll kill it immediately. Okay, this is your main control panel here. Now, I told you that this has a power converter, which, which is right here, and it converts AC to DC. This also has a power inverter, which is operated right here. And the uh, inverter converts 12 volt DC into 110 AC. So, Basically what it does is, is powers your refrigerator, because that's an AC refrigerator down there. So what happens is it takes, it takes the energy from your battery, the 12 volt DC, inverts it to 110 AC, and then sends it to your refrigerator. So when you're going down the road, for example, your, your tow vehicle's uh, alternator will be charging the battery on this trailer. The alternator, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the inverter will be taking the energy from the battery, inverting it to 110 AC, and operating your refrigerator okay Hopefully. Um, the front slide room which is electric the bedroom's front slide room is operated right here the other four are all hydraulic so there's one only one button for them so uh, that would be uh, right here okay your awning is here these are all lights of course um, oh, let's see so you have your water heater right and these are the switches here and I told you about the uh, the um, the uh, that's for gas right there I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm getting confused here. this is that's the light on gas that's the turn on electric remember I told you about the second switch the one that's in the lower left hand corner outside turn on your water pump it's right here to check all your um, levels your batteries charged fresh water is empty black is empty gray one and gray two uh, they graduate up in one-third increments, so once you can pa up past two-thirds, you're going to have to start thinking about dumping the, the gray and black tanks, okay? All right, I think that covers that one. TV has to be strapped to close. There are, there are um, remotes for everything. So Fly came back to life after being frozen. Um... So the, the, your sound is, let me get down here so I can see it. Your sound is down here. This plays discs also. You can see it plays CDs and DVDs. Uh, it has a remote. 
you can stream wirelessly using Bluetooth so you can stream from your phone or your tablet um, you have different speaker zones here zone, zones 1 and zones 2 um, you can stream off this USB right here so you could put all your favorite albums on on one stick and take them with you for example so there's a lot you can do with it you just have to go through the mode to um, select what you want to do and of course when you when you go to Bluetooth and then you push pair it'll it'll send out a signal so you can pair okay um, now your fireplace has got a remote so there it is right there so basically you can you can set the temperature right now the fan speed is high so it's really kicking out um, you can set the temperature to thermostat you can change the appearance of the flame you can um, change from Fahrenheit to Celsius and it has a timer so if you want to you could set it to turn on you know 10 20 minutes before you get up in the morning and it'll take the chill out of the trailer that sort of thing so it's a it's functional thing it doesn't just look cool it, it actually is a good heater okay so you can pull these back cushions off of both of these sofas and they fold out into a three panel hide a bed and they got foam panels on so that's two more places to sleep here and here you've got guests these are of course theater seats here and they're all powered you can turn on the, the um, massager you can turn on the heat uh, light of course and then you can extend and retract the footrest also from here so it does all that Alrighty. this device here is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector it also is a low battery alarm so basically here let me just do this here if I can find a button here so you can see um, that's what it sounds like first test was for LP second one for carbon monoxide and when it beeps slowly like that it's telling you your battery's low okay and then it goes back to green it should always be green if it's not get it serviced it's very important if it goes off um, for a carbon monoxide or LP gas you obviously take everybody outside leave the door open shut the gas off of the front and figure out what's going on never disconnect it okay so let's see what we got here we got a microwave and it, the microwave has a, a two-speed vent and light of course your um, this is the screen the monitor for your your um, backup camera that you'll put in your tow vehicle it'll, it can charge into a uh, um, you plug into a cigarette lighter or or uh, you can use this this here you have to get some adapters I believe but okay um, we'll show you how that operates when you when you pick up your range you just spark to light it I'm not sure if we've got the gas turned on but we'll see in a second here so you got three burners obviously and three knobs this one here is the sparker you turn it clockwise to spark right so you just go to light no nope, looks like you shut it off I think yeah anyway the gas is shut off right now so you you spark it by turning it clockwise um, also to light the oven there's a pilot light down here all the way at the back let me see if I can spark it for you anyway you're going to um, come over here to the oven knob which is all the way to the right you go to the picture of the of the pilot light I don't know if you can see that you push this in keep it depressed during the whole lighting procedure then you spark it to light it after the pilot light down here lights you hold it for another 10 seconds or so then you go to operating temperature now when um, when you shut this off obviously the flame goes out but so does the pilot light so you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven always make sure you keep the, the glass top shut when you're traveling or it will break Okay. refrigerator works like any other refrigerator okay I don't have to explain that to you you know how that works and it's like I said it's a 110 AC refrigerator so it'll work off a regular current or inverted 12 volts that you get from the battery alright so you only have two chairs here but underneath the, the um, bed there's two more that fold up so let's go look at that I gotta pick up the pace here too I'm running out of time I only have a little under 30 minutes to uh, do this 
Okay. So I pick up the bed, and then you can see the chairs are right there. Okay. We shut it. You've got a second. This two. There's two zones for the heating. So this is your your front thermostat. You just push the mode button to light it up, and then you keep pushing it to cycle through the options. This is for your um, your your digital powered antenna that's on the roof you have to turn it on to get a good signal anytime you're using it so keep that in mind um, another TV this is pre-plumbed and wired for a washer dryer combo so if you wanted to add a washer dryer combo it would go right here and then of course you have uh, just a regular wardrobe over there to hang clothes okay Last but not least, the bathroom it works like any other shower and sink, you know, nothing unique about it. Now the toilet, like I'm sure you've owned RVs before, but um, right, that's antifreeze right there, but basically that's the flush pedal. Um, there's a sample of chemical. So the thing is, this is right over the black tank. That's the black tank right down there. So after you plug in at the campground, hook up your power, you'll come in here, you'll dump one dose of chemical right here. Then you'll step on the pedal and let about a gallon of water run into the black tank below. Some people use more, it's up to you. But the bottom line is if you, you've got to have water and chemical in it before you start using it. If you don't, it'll be a, it can get clogged up, first of all. Second of all, the smell will be terrible. And um, you probably only do it once. <laughs> You just have to remember, anytime the black tank, let's say you're going to, uh, you, you, you had to dump your black tank because it was full, but you're going to stay another week or two at the campground. Well, after you dump the black tank, you repeat the procedure. Dose of chemical, gallon or so of water. Okay? Alrighty. I think that about covers it. I'm looking around here. This is your main thermostat here. Like I said, you just hit the mode, and then you can cycle through heating, fan the fan is just the air conditioner running without the compressor and then cool which is the air conditioner of course and um, one one rule of thumb is if they give you the option to run your fan on auto always choose that okay so all right well I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit um, one last thing here sorry this is an owner's manual on a USB stick so you can you can look at it uh, I put it on one of the key chains. There's two, two sets there. So anyway, thanks for buying your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Please uh, remember what I said about inspecting the roof. People do not inspect the roof enough, uh, generally speaking. So make sure you keep up with that every 90 days. And right now the trailer is winterized. So, okay, thank you.